social subtypes. I've briefly commented on them, but you're going to see them again in just a second here, I hope. Oh, dear. Here we go. This all comes from Lorna Wing's work. We have people who are aloof and avoidant. For them, social exchange is very difficult, close to painful. It requires so much simultaneous processing of information, it's just really hard to pull it together. You may find someone like this who's willing to talk to you, but they can't make and maintain gaze and talk to you at the same time. So the conversations are going to be like this, or they're, they're going to be with, you know, averted gaze, <clears throat> or they're going to have a difficult time, excuse me, <clears throat> they're going to have a difficult time regulating the visual with the verbal and the physical presence simultaneously. Okay? They may just walk off from these situations. Right? They may just not be interested and not go there. This is the group that I called active but odd, let's say eager but incompetent. Like to do it, want to do it, want to have friends, going about it in a way that's just not going to work for you. And the last group are kids and adults and adolescents who we're going to call sort of passive. Um, this is Hakuna Matata autism. Okay, you know, let's go with the flow. Kind of not a, no, no big deal. Good follower. Not going to be a good initiator, but kind of go along with the kids. This is the kid who's most at risk for social teaching, especially if it's a girl. Okay, let me tell you why. In our culture, if you are a quiet, demure, female in elementary school who's doing okay academically, people say, wow, what a great kid, right? If you're that boy, you might be identified as avoidant, shy, maybe something's going wrong here because you're supposed to be out you know, knocking people over or using anything you can find to create weaponry, All right? Yeah, you know that's true. We get, this, we get this situation with these kids who are passive and they also look pretty good on the playground when they're in, pre, um, in primary grades because they go run around with the other kids. What they don't do is set it up and start it and initiate it with other kids. And they don't know how to do that very well. So they are kind of our shadow weakness, weak spots. We have to be very cautious in finding these kids because they can slip into the background, become unnoticed until some other event happens.